Hi there, this is Hadron's Mesons, Leptons and Strangeness. This is lesson five in the particle physics series. And unfortunately, it's very content driven. So if I bore you to death, uh, I do apologize. But this stuff's also very important. You need to know it. And without it, you can't really, you know, even begin to answer a lot of the particle physics exam style questions. So Hadron's and Leptons. This is going to be a lot of note taking on this, so you might need to pause a lot, get notes down, read through them again, you know, just try and learn it. Hadrons are particles that interact through the strong interaction. So some examples of hadrons are protons, neutrons, pions and kaons. The pions and kaons belong to a small group, a subgroup, we'll talk about that later. So leptons, these are particles that do not interact through the strong interaction. They are believed to be fundamental. Some examples involve electrons, positrons, muons, and neutrinos. A muon is just a heavy electron, 207 times heavier. And neutrinos are basically zero mass, no charge particles that are very hard to detect. We'll go into more detail about them later. So leptons interact through the weak interaction. And all charged particles interact as well as through the electromagnetic interaction. Remember, if you need to take any notes or want to, just pause. So, hadrons. So, a subgroup of hadrons is called baryons. And baryons are hadrons that are protons or particles that eventually decay into protons. So, the only stable baryon is the proton. So, if you had a neutron that was on its own, isolated. Neutrons are baryons that decay into protons and they have a half-life of 12 minutes. Other baryons have much, much shorter half-lives. Baryons have got another name, if you hear this. They're also called fermions. So mesons, they're hadrons that do not include pro uh, protons in their decay products. All mesons are unstable. Examples of mesons include pions, pi mesons, and kaons, k mesons. At school, you may have looked at quark composition. I will be doing quark composition in a later video to give the differences between baryons and mesons. So pions or pi mesons. So pions or pi mesons can be positively charged, uh, negatively charged, or uncharged. You have a pi plus, a pi minus, and a pi zero. When we do the quark video, you will be expected to be able to recall the quark compositions for these three particles. They have rest masses between the muon and proton, so they're about 300 times the mass of an electron. They're all very unstable and decay by the weak interaction. So pi plus decays into an anti-muon and a neutrino. A pi minus decays into a muon and an anti-neutrino. And a pi naught decays into two high energy photons. It's a lot of information to take now. Right, let's move on. So kaons or k mesons. So kaons or k mesons can be positively charged, so you can get a k plus negative, you can get a k minus or uncharged k naught. So they have rest masses greater uh, than pions but less than a proton. These are about a thousand times the mass of an electron. They're all unstable, they decay by the weak interaction, and they decay far more slowly than pions. When scientists first discovered this, they saw the relatively slow decay rate, about 10 to the minus 10 seconds. It was unexpected and led to a scientist looking at it and saying, hmm, well, that's strange. And then strange particles, you know, that's where it were birthed. That's where it came from. Kaons uh, decay into pions, muons, and neutrinos. So like I said, it's a lot of information to get down. You probably want to make some comprehensive notes before you start doing the exam questions because you'll have to keep referring back to them. So what is strangeness? So it's a property possessed by some hadrons that has been assigned in order to explain why some particle interactions take place more slowly than others or do not occur at all. So we'll be looking at strangeness later in some questions. 
So the K plus meson was the first particle of strangeness to be discovered and has been assigned with a strangeness number of plus one. Strangeness is a property, so it's just like charge, that is reversed in an antiparticle. Therefore, the K minus meson has strangeness minus one. We'll look at this in more detail later when we look at conservation. Strangeness, however, is not conserved in the weak interaction. So when you practice an exam style questions, that can possibly come up as an answer to certain types of questions, and it's used frequently. So baryon number. So baryons, protons and neutrons, they have a baryon number of plus one. Antibaryons, so you've got your antiproton or your antineutron, they have a baryon number of minus one. And then non-baryons, so mesons or leptons, you know, logically they have a baryon number of zero. So in conservation of baryon number, in all interactions, the total baryon number is conserved. It's an easy one to check. We'll be using that when we look at conservation. Leptons then. So they're believed to be fundamental. This means they do not decay into any other particles except leptons. Two families of leptons and antileptons in order of increasing rest mass. So we've got electrons and their neutrinos. And then you get muons and their neutrinos. So remember, muons are just very large electrons. You know, they have a mass 207 times the mass of the electron. And they also have their own neutrinos, called muon neutrinos. So let's look at muons. So mu minus. The negative of the charge like electrons, but 207 times more massive. So muons that arrive on the Earth's surface are created indirectly as decay products of collisions of cosmic rays with particles on the Earth's atmosphere. This is an interesting point. About 10,000 muons reach every square metre of the Earth's surface a minute. And these charged particles form as byproducts of cosmic rays colliding with molecules in the upper atmosphere, travelling at relativistic speeds. Relativistic just means very, very fast, like, you know, a fraction of the speed of light. There's also a positively charged anti-muon, muon plus, positive muon. The muons are unstable and decay by the weak interaction into electrons and antineutrinos. We're going to look at those decay series later. And anti-muons uh, decay into positrons and neutrinos. So you've got to kind of remember this one. I'll do both decays later. So muons decay into electrons and antineutrinos. The anti-muons decay into positrons and neutrinos. They're basically you know, opposite of each other in how they decay. So leptons and antileptons. So leptons, you get electrons. And then a muon, increase in mass. There is another one. There is the tau, uh, or tau muon. But we don't need to discuss that for, for A-level study. So the associated neutrino with the electron is the electron neutrino, mu E. And then the associated neutrino with the muon is the muon neutrino. So anti-leptons, these are the opposite. So electron will be positron, positive electron. And the associated neutrino will be an electron antineutrino. Instead of a mu minus, the anti-lepton is a mu plus, the anti-muon. And you probably guessed the muon antineutrino or the anti-muon neutrino. The bar above the symbol just means just means anti, the antiparticle equivalent. Okay, let's move on. So finally, the lepton number. Oh, I'm, I'm aware it's a lot of information at once, and that, but I hope you've got some comprehensive notes so far. So leptons, they're the electrons, muons, and the associated neutrinos. They have a lepton number plus one. Antileptons. So they're the opposites, the antiparticles, they're the positron, the antimuon, and the antineutrinos. They have a lepton number of minus one. And then non-leptons, so examples, hadrons, photons, mesons. They have a lepton number of zero. 
Conservation of lepton number. In all interactions, the total lepton number is conserved. And lepton numbers are, are usually given in a test. So to finish this lesson, if you want to pause this, I want to have a go at this. So missing information on this table, just sketch it out. And then I'll talk you through it. Okay, let's have a look. So a particle proton, is it matter or antimatter? It's matter. Is it hadron or a lepton? If you've got your notes and use them, you'd know that a proton is a hadron. The electromagnetic interaction, yes, protons are charged. Is it a baryon, a meson, or neither? Proton is indeed, of course, a baryon. Positron, matter or antimatter? Antimatter, the, it's the antimatter equivalent of the electron. Is it a hadron or a lepton? It's a lepton, it more specific will be an anti-lepton. Is it subject to the electromagnetic interaction? It's charged, so yes. Is it a baryon, a meson, or neither? It's neither, because it's a lepton, or an anti-lepton. It's k naught, matter or antimatter? It's matter. Hydrogen or lepton, it's hydrogen already given. Electromagnetic interaction? No, because it's got no charge. Is it a baryon, a meson, or neither? It's a meson or specifically a K meson or K on. So next one. An antineutrino, if it's antimatter and it's not subject to the electromagnetic interaction and it's a lepton, you know, it must be an antineutrino. The other particle could have been a, an antineutron, but obviously an antineutron is a hadron. So it can't be that. Is it a baryon, a meson or neither? It's neither because it's a lepton. Or more specifically, an anti lepton. So, next one, muon. Is it matter or antimatter? Matter. Is it electro electromagnetic interaction? Yes, because muons are mu negative or mu minus. Is it a baryon, a meson, or neither? Neither, because it's a lepton. So, this last one is a neutron, matter or antimatter? It's definitely matter. Hadron or lepton? Definitely hadron. Is it subject to electromagnetic interaction? No, because it's got no charge. Hopefully that went okay. Hopefully you've got some comprehensive notes and I hope that helped and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.